Hello, my most amazing artists. Today we're talking about something called a sketchbook. A sketchbook is kind of like it sounds. It's a book that you can sketch in. A sketchbook could be big, small, plain, or colorful. It could be a place where you can do paintings. Maybe it's only made for drawing. It's totally up to you and that type of sketchbook. Today we're going to be making our very own sketchbooks. It's going to be a place for us this year to plan and practice drawing or say a certain type of artwork because all artists need practice no matter how much money they make. If they make millions of dollars and are already in museums, they still have a sketchbook because it's a great way to draw what they see as they travel or maybe get a new idea. It's a place to jot that down so that you don't lose it. Also, it could be a place where you do finished works. Maybe you spend a long time drawing on a sketchbook drawing. But it can also be a place to make mistakes without having to erase. It's a place to experiment with a new style, maybe imitate an artist that you like, try out a new art material. It's a great place to experiment and try new things without having to worry about it being perfect because there's no such things as mistakes in art, just happy accidents. So these are some of my sketchbooks that I've used throughout my days in high school and college and even now you'll notice that I have a lot of notes in my sketchbook because I also write down my ideas in sketchbooks sometimes I just try a new thing maybe using charcoal or oil pastel and I want to see what it turns out like with that texture before I do it on a big masterpiece sometimes I use watercolor in my sketchbook our sketchbooks are gonna look like this they are a little bit smaller they are going to be a place where we can plan, where we can practice, and where we can do some silly drawings, or maybe you'll just go here to draw when you're finished early sometimes. Your sketchbook will always be there for you on your table if you feel like you need to practice something before we do it on our final papers. You never have to worry about erasing in your sketchbook. Next, you're going to get a big piece of paper. You get to pick red, yellow, green, blue, orange, lime green, dark blue, light purple, dark purple. You get to pick any color you want. So that's step one today. Choose one color paper. But yes, you only get one. That paper will be folded in half. To fold that paper in half, it's important that you don't fold it hot dog style. That would be a silly looking sketchbook. You fold it, we call it hamburger style. That way, it's nice and wide and will make room for the papers inside of it. Today you're going to be making your sketchbook cover. It's important that you line up your edges. Not like that, nope, nope, nope. We fold it by lining up the corners. And once you get the corners, you give it a pinch and then slide and slide. That will create a crease on the left side. That leads me to step number three, which is design your front cover. Your front, you're gonna know, is the cover because the crease will be on the left. Books always open from the right side, so your open side should be on the right and your crease or your binding of your sketchbook should be on the left. That's the side that doesn't open. Open side on the right, the crease side on the left. That's how you're gonna know it's the front. Now, when you start designing, you will have Sharpies. You'll have big Sharpies or regular size and then fine point Sharpies. It's always important to cap them. You'll have markers, you'll have pencils, you'll have colored pencils, you'll have crayons. And these crayons are actually kind of special. They're called construction paper crayons. They're made for this, construction paper. We'll get there later. First, I'm gonna show you that I'm going to be making bubble letters today. If you would like to make bubble letters too, I have a how-to sheet that'll be on your tables to show you how. A lot of you might already know how already, and that's okay. If I'm making bubble letters, I'm gonna lightly sketch out my name and draw it light, light, light till I get it right. That way I can always erase. After I draw it lightly, then I'm going to hug my letters with curves. I'm gonna go ahead and pretend I'm wrapping a bubble right around those letters, making sure that I don't have any points and just curve around them. That's gonna create the bubble. Then I use an eraser to erase the insides. That way I just am left with the bubble outline. And then I outline it in Sharpie, erase my pencil lines, and create some highlights on my bubble letters. The highlights are going to make it look realistic, like a shiny bubble. You would notice that on a bubble, or really anything that's shining, would have a highlight or a part where it's shiny and white on the right side, or wherever the light is coming from. You have to pick one side because then the opposite side would be the shadow. So on my left side, I'm creating the shadow on my letters. If you would like to challenge yourself to try doing this highlight and shadow technique, you could, but you do not have to. You can write your name any way you know how. You could do it with cursive, you could do it with block letters, you could try 3D letters, or just write your name, plain old your name, and then design around it. Your sketchbook design should be all about you. It should tell me something about you. It should be your favorite things, maybe something you enjoy drawing, your favorite colors, your favorite foods, your favorite sports teams, maybe your favorite thing to do after school, maybe your favorite subject in school, maybe something about your family or where you're from. 
Your sketchbook should tell me a little bit about you because it expresses yourself and what you enjoy drawing. Or something that tells me, hey, I know that that's that person's sketchbook even though it has their name nice and big on it. Yes, it still has to have your name. It can be a nickname as long as it's still the nickname that I know that you're called often. Not anything silly that I would never know whose it is if I found it. Then I'm gonna use my construction paper crayons, those are the ones with the black wrapper, to color in my letters. You'll notice I choose to use crayons because they show up super, super bright on this paper. Then I'm gonna write my class code in the bottom right corner, just in case it gets lost, I know where to find it. If you make a mistake, there is no getting a new paper, but you can always fold it inside out or turn it over to the back side and use that as your cover. So if you make a mistake that you feel like you just can't fix, well, you can always turn it inside out or turn it over. You actually have four chances to get your cover right today, but I do suggest not using Sharpie until you're sure. So if you use a Sharpie and then feel like, oh, I need to start over, well, you don't get a new piece of paper, but you can turn it inside out. Sharpie does bleed through though, so beware that that Sharpie might have gone through to the other side. Now I'm gonna draw a bunch of doodles of things I like, maybe pizza, fish, whatever you want. Kind of like creating yourself a, a coloring book. Everything gets outlined and then gets colored in, so it really stands out. I'm not leaving any pencil lines left behind. Everything gets outlined with a Sharpie and then colored in. I'm gonna make sure my sketchbook is super detailed, but if I run out of time today, it's okay. It'll always be there in my table folder for me to come back to. So I don't need to keep working through the cleanup alarm and not listening to Miss Q. Nope, I'm gonna make sure that I clean up on time. And if I finish early, I will have time to put my paper in my sketchbook. So if you get to a good stopping point on your cover, you can go to the staple station where you'll get your paper put into your sketchbook and do three staples on the side. That's at the top, the middle, and the end. Then your sketchbook's gonna go in your table folder. If you're finished, it goes in there, and it also goes in there if you're not finished today, even if you don't get your paper in your sketchbook. It's gonna go in there either way, and we can get our paper after or next week. So just make sure that you clean up when that cleanup alarm goes off, whether you got your paper in there, whether you finished or not. Then clean up your hands and your area. You always have art wipes in your table bin if you need to do that. All right, artists, have fun.